In this tutorial, we're going to take one of your photos and make it appear like it's a watercolor painting. So open up your photo in Photoshop, right click on the background layer and duplicate it, click OK. Right click on the background copy and say convert to smart object. We're going to apply multiple filters onto this same object and we turn it into a smart object to be able to do that. Go up to your filter gallery and there is a filter called watercolor. If you want to see what it looks like in the preview you can say fit in view or fit on screen. And there are a bunch of presets like the watercolor one. You can choose what you like most. The watercolor one though is not my favorite way of doing this. I like to do it differently. It's a few more steps but I think it's worth it. I actually go up to dry brush, size 10, detail 10 and texture 1 and I click OK and then I'm going to go over to filter again. Don't choose this first option. This is going to apply that dry brush filter that we just added. It will apply it again. We don't want that. We want to open up the gallery so go to the second setting and again you can fit on screen if you want to see what this looks like and this time we're going to add a cutout filter for the cutout filter the number of levels 5 simplicity 4 and fidelity 1 and click OK so now this has given us a different look I can see my before and after now over here the top filter is the one I just applied that is the cutout and then the next one under it is the dry brush the first one so it's sort of applying it on top of each other this is the settings icon if you double click on it it will pop up another panel and you can make changes to the blending mode of that cutout filter and we're going to change this one to pin light and click OK now we're going to go to the filter menu again, but this time we're going to go to blur and then smart blur. We're going to enter a radius of 5 and a threshold of 100 and change the quality to high. Click OK. And then back over in our layers panel, we're once again going to change our blending option. Once it adds this filter to it, it will go on top. Here it is double click that little setting icon and for the blending option for this one for the smart blur we just added we're going to change it so here we're going to go to screen and we're going to change opacity to 50 and click OK. We're going to go back up to filter and this time we're going to go to stylize and we're going to go to find edges. We'll go back to our settings icon, double click on the find edges. So this time we're going to change our blending mode to multiply. So now I'll zoom in on the photograph and you can see the details now look like a painting. Now we're going to make a new layer down here. We're going to click on our new layer icon and we're going to go up to edit, fill, and we're going to change the contents. We're going to change it to a pattern. And this is going to be like the paper texture that the painting's on. I'm going to go to custom pattern. Now, there's a few that are already defaulted, but if you click the settings, there's a lot more that you can add. Artist services, sounds like a good one. Now you can replace these defaulted ones by hitting OK, but I don't like to do that. I like to have more options, so I hit append and it adds them instead of replacing them. And you can do this a number of times with a bunch of different textures. Keep appending instead of adding. And you can choose a texture that you like. Um, I chose this texture. Click OK. Now this layer is actually going to get moved down it's really going to be like our background layer. So put it on top of the locked background and below our background copy. The next thing we're going to do is click back on our background copy layer and we need to add a new mask to this background copy. So down here, click the icon to add a mask. We need this mask to be filled in with black. So go to edit, fill, change from pattern to black, and click OK. Now it didn't fill it with black, it actually filled it with that textured pattern that we just added onto layer one. We're going to play with brushes. 
I did this before. I played with a bunch of different brushes and I actually made them into a group. These are the four favorites that I came up with. Your brushes might look different than mine. It might be because I'm on a laptop. I'm not sure, but yours probably will come up with lots of little icons. Now you can add brushes by clicking on the settings panel, but I do think that I have appended all the brushes that I have available to me in this setting. And I also want to make sure that I'm in the mask thumbnail over in my layers panel and I want to make sure that I have flipped so that white fill color is on top set as the foreground color and not black. Go back to my brushes and I'm going to start dragging this dry brush on top of the mask to reveal the image below it. And with watercolor, you do want to leave a lot of the paper texture on the edges because that's what real watercolor artists would do. Now, depending on how long you press down, you might find that you get the spinning wheel a lot. So be careful not to press too much. Another brush I like is this cross hatching brush. And I'm going to use my square brackets on my keyboard to make this brush really large. Though sometimes it switches me from the brush tool to the smudge tool. I don't know why. This is a really fun textured look. And then this opacity brush works nicely too. And it just softens up some of the edges. And once you've got it where you like it, be sure to save your work and save it as a JPEG and a PSD.